Hi, welcome to uh, the library workshops brought to you by George Fox University Libraries. Uh, my name is Andrea Abernathy, and I will be sharing today um, ways to connect to the scholarship, um, staying connected. So this, um, I'm going to cover a lot of ground today, and I'll try to um, demonstrate everything that you would need um, to get started. So let's go ahead and I'll share my screen and we'll, we'll begin. So um, let, me, let me share my screen and we will begin. Okay, so here we are, staying connected to the scholarly conversation. First of all, um, my hope for you today is that you'll gain new insights on how to stay connected to the scholarship in your field, and that you will learn to use controlled vocabulary um, to, <clears throat> to be able to identify um, and describe your scholarship, and that you'll recognize opportunities for connection. Um, we all look at things differently. We are um, people living in a society that has a lot of pressures on it and we manage our information differently. So um, I want you to understand that these are some ways that you can use to manage your information and to stay connected. Um, and I'll, I'll walk you through setting up alerts and table of contents for delivery of scholarship. Okay, first of all, the question to ask is, who creates and publishes the scholarship in your field? You have trusted publishers that you know. Um, is there an association with flagship journal that you have um, read since undergrad or graduate school? Is there a university in particular that is leading the research in your field and producing scholarship? Is there an institute, an organization um, that funds the scholarship that you, you are contributing to? A conference that's of particular importance or a favorite journal? All of these things, even your leading, um, leading scholars, make a huge difference. And if you take a moment and just reflect on this, make a list <clears throat> and know where, where your scholarship is coming from. Some of these things you're already probably accessing and others may be on the outlier um, situation where you're just not, not accessing. You can connect with these voices um, a lot of different ways. Many of the scholars have Twitter feeds. Um, there's hashtags that you can follow on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all the things. Um, there are YouTube channels with conversations and lectures and, podcasts and newsletters. These are all informal ways that you can stay connected. And once you have that list of, of voices that you are paying attention to, it's really easy to just go and follow a few um, accounts and make sure that you're connected because there's a, there's a natural way that that, um, that works if you, you have those in your social side of things. Um, but also be mindful, you, just because you can access scholarship through um, Twitter, like the conversation, the, um, it's not, you know, the research articles, but it's the, it's the conversation about the topics, right? Um, these informal methods are wonderful, um, but you don't have to pursue these if, if maybe you want to um, keep this part of your world quiet. Another piece of this is we have voices that maybe we can't hear quite as loudly. Um, it may be the smaller association in your field. Maybe it's the Christian Association, um, BIPOC voices, dissenting opinions, scholarship outside the U.S. Um, that maybe not is published in English, or maybe the journals aren't picked up by your favorite um, database but they're still scholarly. They just are outside of the, of the US and um, they're easy to, to forget. You may have a trade journal or a news source that you never pay attention to because it's not scholarly. And it may have um, summative information and just news information that says, hey, this is what's happening. 
Did you hear about this? Um, another thing that we, we sometimes ignore um, is the pricey periodical because we don't think we can access it. And um, all of these voices come from different spaces. And these are harder voices to pull together. These threads of conversation are harder to pull together. And it takes intentionality. Um, and you know, the library can help you with this. You have a particular um, aspect of your scholarship that you're wanting to, to bring in. We're happy to do that. I'm happy to help you with that process. So <clears throat> moving on to the practical strategies. Uh, we want to strengthen conversations. So this is um, an example of a trade publication. So, and I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my screen here and go over to the internet. So um, let me stop my share for a second and I'll go over here. Can't tell, I'm slightly nervous. I can teach in front of students and make mistakes all day long if I have to, but um, teaching in front of uh, the camera is a different conversation. Okay, so let me share my screen here. Now, the library page is here, um, but we're just going to go out to Google um, and we're going to type in international film. I don't remember the title. Hold on. International film, screen international. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's say that we have subscribed to some newsletters from Screen Daily. And they're very eager to make sure that we are connected here. So I've, I've clicked to register. I'm signed up. I've got the newsletters coming in. And I'm, I'm enjoying um, the news of international film. And I'm up to date on the stories. But I also need access to the particular um, uh, titles. Like I, I need to read the actual journal. Well. Um, if I subscribe to the journal, it's um, over 200, 200 pounds, uh, which translates into a lot of US dollars. And this may be the, the source that I need. So what I can actually do here, um, this is Screen International. So I can go back over here to the library. And I can do an advanced search in Primo. Screen International, and we'll um, just type in actors because we're assuming that we, we know exactly what we're looking for. But um, so I've got a couple of different journals here. Um, but you can see, I've got many options. And I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to change this um, to my title is exact. Okay, there we go. So this is a, a current conversation in Screen International. And let's assume this was the article I was looking for. If I needed this article, I could have easily just searched for it because I would have had this information from my newsletters. I open in, in ProQuest Central. And there's my article, the full text. Now, if I had subscribed to this as an academic, I'm trying to keep up with the international film industry, I would have spent over $200. But the library has already done this for me, so I have access to this. The other thing here is I know that this journal is Screen International. So let's say that I want to go ahead and make sure that I have it. Um, so I'm going to. Um, minimize this a little here. I can go ahead and click on eJournals and type in Screen International. And 
and I have access to it. It's the first one that comes up, but there's also a couple of other ones. Some of them might be relevant um, in my interest, um, but the neonatal screening is probably not what I'm looking for. But I have access to this, and it tells me I've got it from 2010 to 2015, and then available from 2017 forward. So I can open this, and I can also pin this to my favorites, and it's wonderful. So going back to our PowerPoint here, um, it's important to check Primo, and Primo being the library um, discovery layer. You want to make sure that you have checked because a lot of the things that are beyond your um, beyond, you don't want to have to subscribe to everything. There's no reason to. The library is already doing that for you for so many things. So always check to see if the library has it. And you can see, you know, just click on advanced search. Now, looking a little bit further, we're changing gears a little bit. Controlled vocabulary. If we go back to our, um, um, <clears throat> hold on. Okay, if we go back to the internet here, and I'm looking at my Screen International um, record from before, so I'm going to go back a couple of clicks here. Um, so if I look at this article about Lauren Dark, when, I'm, when I click in here, I have an author that's hyperlinked and actors as a subject heading. Um, and I'm going to actually add a couple of I'm going to take out Screen International. I want to show you this. So I have actors, and let's just add Marvel as a keyword here, um, any field. <clears throat> now, I have a number of resources, and um, I'm going to click on this silent films in St. Augustine. Um, you can see I have subject headings here. Motion picture industry, Florida, St. Augustine, history, silent films, history and criticism. So I have one that's incredibly specific and one that's quite broad. Um, and I also have my authors. This is controlled vocabulary. These are subject headings. And so when I click on one, it immediately opens up the resources that we have mapped to this. Now, <clears throat> If we go back to our controlled vocabulary here and um, we look at this, there, um, it's, it's terminology that is decided upon by organizations and librarians and associations, experts in the fields, um, and it describes the scholarship and you use it to search for the scholarship. Two things can happen when you're working on your own scholarship. You can miss something because you didn't look for the right, um, you didn't use the right terminology to find the resources that apply to your, your research interest. Or <clears throat> you can um, describe your own scholarship that you're publishing with inaccurate words. They may be accurate to your to your research, but they may not be accurate in the fact that they're not indexed as subject headings. So let me show you what this looks like. This is a, um, a paper on playgroup therapy, uh, therapeutic playgroup for children with a developmental delay. It's in the Journal of Child and Family Studies. Um, Social Work uses this journal. You'll notice the keywords. These are your author-supplied keywords. Therapeutic playgroups, feasibility, manual development, developmental delay, developmental disability. All this makes sense, and it looks like a well-described paper, well-titled. I mean, this is exactly what it's about. However, <clears throat> if we go one click more, excuse me, You'll, this is the record from the database. 
And you'll notice that the title's the same. We've got our authors, there's our source, um, but we have these subject terms that are hyperlinked, very similar to the way they were in Primo. And you'll notice therapeutic playgroup is not listed. We have playgroups, we have developmental delay, but it's listed as play therapy. <clears throat> the author supplied keywords do not match the subject headings. So it's important to make sure that you're searching for the things that are indexed as subject headings. You can also search for the things that are indexed as author supplied words, but <clears throat> there's that disconnect between the two sets of terminologies. So you're going to want to make sure that you apply your terminology correctly. And this can be easily done by, um, let me go back to our screen here. Um, <clears throat> so if we're back over here um, and we click on every home, and we go to our databases A to Z, well, let's say that we're in social index for social work. Let me wait patiently. You'll see you have your subject headings up here. <clears throat> and um, I can click into the subject heading and I have a long list of resources and I can type in play therapy. In play therapy, is not listed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, type in play therapy at the top and search. And I'm going to see what's available. So I have number two, I'm just going to go ahead and click in. And I have play therapy and narrative play, narrative therapy. These are um, so they look like they, they may be synonyms. So I'm going to go ahead and click on play therapy. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go back up here to my subject terms. And I'm going to find out um, what there is to be said about narrative therapy. Um, and this index does not appear to be working correctly. Let me try here. Um, so we'll try. Um, subject terms, so I clicked on more indexes, browsed for subject terms, and then I'm going to try play therapy. <clears throat> okay, it is in here. All right, so I'm going to click on that. I have 347 um, sources, and I can go ahead and choose any of these other ones and add those to my search. You see, there it goes, and I'm going to go ahead and search and I should end up with my resources. Um, but it's important to go ahead and gather your subject headings. So as you're determining whether or not you have all the research gathered um, to move forward with your ideas or you're describing your own paper, you want to find out what the subject headings are. And if you ever need any help, the library is here to help um, for sure. So we're going to go ahead and move forward here. Um, one of the big questions is, have you signed in? All right, connecting to scholarship is all about making sure that the resources that you are accessing know how to map back to you so that you have authentication, so you're not sitting at the coffee shop trying to finish something and you can't get into the articles and the databases and all the things. Um, and also so that you can gather your resources for um, effective um, saving of searches and just alerts and all kinds of things. If you're signed in, it makes a huge difference. <coughs> now, personal research accounts are not automatically linked to DFU credentials. We have a few that are. Um, I think ProQuest um, automatically does that, but you can break it. Um, I've done that before. But you, they're not automatically linked, so you're going to set up essentially uh, rewards, like you think about your rewards card at your favorite stores. Um, you're setting up personal logins for your research accounts. So you may use EBSCO every day of the week if you want an EBSCO account. It may be Elsevier, it may be a JSTOR account. Um, 
it's not platform specific. Um, it, excuse me, it is platform specific. So if you use three different EBSCO databases, your login for those EBSCO databases are going to be the same. It's not database specific. <clears throat> and um, I really recommend that you do this for your accounts. Okay, so here we are. Play therapy. This is a screenshot from EBSCO and search index. And it's also called sand tray therapy. Now, in this particular example here, you can see I've gathered some resources and I've clicked on the share button on the top right. If I am logged in, um, which I am here, you can see my name, um, I can add that search to a folder and save it because I want to come back to it. I can email it to myself. <clears throat> I can set up an RSS feed or set up my permalink. And you'll excuse me. I, um, I'm just, the weather change has gotten to me. <clears throat> so one of the key things that you can do to really transform your scholarship and have, have current academic research in your inbox is to subscribe to RSS feeds. And I remember um, when email and the internet and all these things were new and the RSS feeds were new and it was like, oh my goodness, this is so amazing. And we subscribed to everything and nobody ever looked at this stuff again. Um, and it's different with academic research because you do need that table of contents. You do need um, a reminder to, to check in with that journal. So <clears throat> the distinctives, um, you can save a search or the table of contents. It's just incredible what you're able to do. And these RSS feeds um, have a lot of different ways they are found. Some of them are on the public facing websites of journals. So the library itself may subscribe to uh, the Journal of Family um, Studies or whatever. But it has a public facing website that's for public, you know, for the general public and subscribers. That RSS feed may be on the front end or it may be within the database itself. So they're not, they're not intuitive. Um, and we're going to continue on here. So in this particular case, we have a search alert and this is from our play therapy search. OK. And what I've done is I, I clicked and I, I brought this up um, under create an alert. And let's go ahead and actually do this. Um, all right. So we're here. I'm also going to add sand, sand tray therapy. All right, I have five, and actually that needs to be an or because they're synonymous. They're, they're different, but they're synonymous. Um, so I have sand tray or play therapy, and this looks good. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sign in, and I've got my, my account set up already. <clears throat> if you haven't signed in, you've got this little sign up button right here, and it's um, kind of invisible, so make sure that you Click that the first time that you do this. All right, so I'm going to continue. So here we are. I want to save this search. My name's at the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click the share button and I'm going to click the RSS feed. Once I do that, this is what it looks like. And I'm going to choose how often I get this. I'm going to say once a month within the last, you know, I'm just going to say whenever. And I'm going to save this alert. And I need to put in my email address. And it can be different than the one that you have linked to this account. Um, so you could actually set one of these up for somebody. Um, and I save it. And this search will come to my account in my email. But the other thing that I can do is I can grab this feed right here and I can use Zotero. So let's come back to our 
data or presentation here. Okay, Zotero <clears throat> is a bibliographic management system. It helps with citations. It's, uh, it's billed as a personal research assistant. Zotero can manage RSS feeds. And when I found this out, I was like, this is a game changer. So we have our RSS feed URL, so we're good. The next thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna click on new library, the new feed, and then from URL. We're gonna add the URL, then we're gonna set up our time frame, and then it'll all just appear. And it's gonna look like this. And let me, okay, so you see, these are the steps that it'll look like, and we're just gonna go ahead and do this live. So, in Zotero, um, actually, let me close this and we'll go from the beginning. So I have Zotero downloaded on my computer. And it's a little messy because I use it a lot um, for students. But at the top, top right, I mean top left, there's this little new, new box. It's a new library. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to choose new feed from URL. And then I paste in my search. I click enter. And then it'll populate the title. Got my advanced options so I can set those up. And I click save. And then it goes down here at the bottom. And an immediate, well, it takes, it takes a second, but it goes ahead and pulls things. So these are from the 90s. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, open this one by uh, Brownlow. So this looks maybe promising. I can add it to my library. I can mark it as unread, so maybe I, I need to come back to it later. Um, and the other thing that's really cool is I can double click on this because of the way Zotero is set up, um, and it will bring me to the record itself so that I can see if I'm interested in it and I can check for full text if I would like to. So this is just amazing. Um, the RSS feeds are wonderful tools. And I wanted to show you one other thing here. Um, so I have a journal. Uh, this is the Journal of the Medical Library Association. And um, this is all pulled together and it, it shows up every, every publication. So if I need um, to go over this review of this um, <coughs> tool that librarians use, or I want to look at updating strategies, you know, or something, I can just open these and it comes right here to the journal itself. And this is one of those public facing ones. This will take a second to load. It may take more than a second to load. Okay, so this, you know, immediately um, pulled, um, pulled the record and you'll notice that this is the journal, um, the journal itself, and <clears throat> I believe what we want is notifications. So I want to show you where that RSS feed is. Um, but I think I've clicked the wrong thing. I believe I have. Okay, we're going to move on. So there's another thing that you can do, um, and that's subscribing to Table of Contents. Now, <clears throat> Ovid is one of our vendors that has a really uh, clean way to subscribe to the Table of Contents. It's important to understand that different, different vendors of information have different ways that they present your opportunities to connect with the scholarship. And they try to they try to be unique and different, but there's also some some similarities across the board. So in Ovid's case, which has a lot of our physical therapy journals and our nursing journals, um, it looks like this, and we'll we'll go through it step by step. I've got screenshots here for you, but you'll notice you have that RSS feed. You've got a My Favorites because you have a personal login, and then you have the eTalk. And um, and we're going to go ahead and just walk through that um, <clears throat> step by step because you'll have the PowerPoint available to you. Um, so let's go ahead and go over to Ovid. 
um, from the A to Z list. I'm going to clear and I'm going to go here to O. So Ovid journals. So if you're in the health sciences, this is really important. Okay, so there's 110 journals listed. I can sign into my account or I can just do this on the fly. I have, there's a I can search over here. I can also search by subject or by title, by availability. So um, I'm going to look at the health professions and I'm going to choose um, exercise science. And I am interested in um, the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. Okay, so if I click into this, I have, you know, the current issue, and I also have my RSS, eTalk, and email jumpstart. The jumpstart is actually your permanent link, your stable URL, um, persistent URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on eTalk, and I get this very advanced looking screen. <laughs> so almost like, am I at the right place? Yes, I am at the right place. So I'm just going to type in my email here and click enter. And it will tell me that all of this is going to come my way. Um, so I have the American Journal of Child Nursing, Maternal Child, and all of these are, are subscribed and I can add additional ones if I want to. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, <clears throat> Well, it looks like I'm having to check which one I want. So, um, which is different than, than it was in the past. Okay, so that's, that's new. Um, didn't do that yesterday. Okay, so I would have to find the journal that I was looking for, and then I would, um, I would add it, um, you know, whatever it was. Um, I'd go ahead and I'd add to the text. And then that one would also come together. So that's that is subscribing to the eTalks. And um, I'm going to go ahead and come back to our PowerPoint here. <clears throat> now, thank you for being patient as we flip back and forth. Um, so, like this is what we just did, <clears throat> and the email looks like this. Um, it, you have your journal title and um, just hyperlinks into the into the table of contents. Now, if you subscribe to an, an RSS feed from, from Ovid and some other things, it'll look a little bit like this. You click on it and you get this incredibly long bit of text. What you're looking for is not the actual um, coding, but the URL at the top. So when you add that URL um, into your Zotero, it's as simple as, you know, coming in here and adding a new feed from that URL. And it's important to know that it's not always going to look as pretty as you think it should. Sometimes it really will look like this. And that is intimidating to be, to be sure. But please don't be intimidated. Just um, continue on. Okay. We've covered a couple of different things here. Um, and I, I really think that adding, adding a bibliographic manager, management system to what you do, and you don't have to use Zotero, you can use EndNote, you can use um, Mendeley, there's, there's many on, on the market, but all of them will have a function like this, so make sure that you investigate. Uh, Zotero is open source and, um, and free, so it's, it's very easy for students and faculty to use, um, and it is nearly always um, sufficient. So we, we, we enjoy sharing it with our students and faculty in the library. Okay, so here we go. Now, Elsevier. Elsevier publishes, I think, about 30% of the world's um, academic research. And Having an Elsevier personal account is very important, just like a, a EBSCO one is or a ProQuest. So a personal account in EBSCO 
I mean, in science, an Elsevier personal account is going to look like this. Science Direct is one of our um, journal subscriptions that's published by Elsevier. And you'll know it's Elsevier by this um, tree, this beautiful tree um, icon, and usually um, orange um, text. So anyway, you can see here that I've clicked on my name and all of these things here are available to me as, as a personal account holder. So I have recommendations, search history, my reading history. I can also manage alerts. So this would be an easy way to keep up with your scholarship and to set up things that are really, really useful. So we're going to go to the next one. And in the Science Direct, when I'm in the alerts section, it asks me, am I interested in keeping up to date with publications? And of course I am. Everybody has a favorite journal. And so you can click find a publication. Now keep in mind, these are only the journals published by Science Direct, um, which are published by Elsevier. Um, let me clarify that. There's journals published by Elsevier. So when you walk through this, you do a search. And I found physical therapy and sport. And I end up on the landing page for the journal. And then I don't see an RSS feed. I don't see a journal alert. I actually have to click into articles and issues and go down here to set up journal alerts or my RSS feed. And that's important to notice because you would think there'd be like a little, something little on the right or off to the side somewhere, but no, it's, it's within a menu. And when you're using um, this, let me come back over here. So we're going to go ahead and go over to Science Direct. Um, it never hurts to see how you get to things more than once. So databases, A to Z, S for Science Direct. I'm going to go ahead and click in and show you this live. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And Okay, so here we are, and this is my article feed. Um, I have one of my journals that I'm following is Trends in Genetics. So I have recommendations <clears throat> based on what I've searched for, and I can see my alerts here at the top right. Um, I have Trends in Genetics, and I can go ahead and search for an additional publication if I would like to. I can also edit this and say, you know what, actually, I want the articles in the press too because I it's genetics and, and things change quickly. So I want, I want everything there, <clears throat> there is to have here. And I can click on my account here and I can look at my alerts and my reading history and all of these things, which are great. Now, the next slide is um, Scopus. Now, Scopus is also sold by Elsevier. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Scopus because Scopus is incredibly powerful for our sciences and even some of our other disciplines because when I'm in here, this is also Elsevier, I'm already signed in. It remembers who I am. I've got my bell here, which is the iconic icon for alerts, and <clears throat> I can search an author. So, um, McGowan Bethany is a librarian, and I must have misspelled her name, so I'm going to edit my search. Um, actually, it would help if I clicked on author. Um, you can also click here for author name. Um, so, let me try this again. McGowan Bethany. All right, there she is. So this is her author profile. And I can see the scholarship that she's produced and the reviews that she's written and the articles she's written. And I can also see um, who has cited her work right here. 
and who she has written with and, and additional resources. So what I can do is I can set up an alert right here and I can choose either a document alert or an author citation alert. Um, so I'm gonna choose like the author citation alert and I've got it all set up. So I'm gonna click set up alert. Well, this actually um, is already set up. Um, so let me <clears throat> set up the document alert. I'm gonna click on that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my alerts page, which is the, which is the bell. Okay, and I have this set up and I have also my author citations set up. And the document itself, I have um, her work, Evaluating Nursing Faculty's Approach to Information Literacy Instruction, um, that came out last year. And I have that citation alert ready to go and I can even check for new results, which there aren't any at this point. Um, but I, I have that set, so it, it, these results will come to my inbox. This is key if you have a piece of scholarship that has a, it's a cornerstone of the, your current research. It may be your own research that you are making sure that you're staying abreast of the conversations that people are having about your contribution. Or it may be that there's a scholar um, at another institution or elsewhere that has written something that really matters um, to the entirety of the conversation. You can follow that so that these citations end up in your inbox so you never are, are unaware of, of new ideas coming forward and new, new additions to that conversation. And to that end, I want to go ahead and go over to um, Google Scholar. So Google Scholar um, has a lot, of re a lot of beautiful things about it. And you want to make sure that you are signed in, okay? Otherwise, this doesn't work. And on the menu on the left, you have alerts that you can set up. You also have advanced searching and settings. Um, from settings, you want to click on that, then click on library links. Make sure that George Fox is indicated because if it's not, you won't be able to get to some of the things um, because there'll be paywalls. But if you've got George Fox listed, it'll, it'll, the link will resolve through the library. So I'm going to go back over here to alerts. So I have a couple of different things set up, but I'm going to go ahead and create an alert. And I'm going to take that title of that article from Scopus and show you how this works. So I have my title and I'm going to put that in quotation marks. And I have two results. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an alert. Okay. And then this is, this is set up. And these will come to my inbox, which is fantastic because you can be really specific um, looking for um, a particular article, um, or you can also um, go ahead and look at, actually, I, meant, I didn't get that one quite right. So I'm going to go back and cancel that alert. Made a mistake. Hold on. Create an alert. I'm going to search that and show up to 20 results, email to, okay, that should work. All right, so Google Scholar. Fantastic for setting up alerts. Now, let's go back to our PowerPoint and make sure we don't forget anything. Um, so we have using Scopus for alerts. Um, and I've got some slides here that, you know, really are um, just clear about where, where to click and how to set that up. And it's, it's important. 
So and we just went over Google Scholar, and here's how to set up your um, Google Scholar for, for George Fox, um, which we went over. Okay, so in summary, here's where we stand. <clears throat> you have contributing individuals in your field who are making a difference, who are adding to the conversation of the scholarship of the scholarship. And some of those voices are really easy to access and others are difficult. So go ahead and identify them and intentionally seek out those voices that are harder to hear from uh, for various reasons. Your public facing databases, your, your websites, your, your journals, um, anything that you can gather naturally within your, your normal realm of life that you want to add to that. Go ahead and, and visit those and subscribe to the newsletters. Um, take the time for those personal accounts in the databases. It is so frustrating to almost find an answer for what you're looking for and then have to walk away to teach a class or attend a meeting or take care of something else. And your research is sitting there almost to the point where you, you know that you have found what you were looking for. And a personal account sets it up so that you can, you can save those searches. Um, and you can even set up those alerts like we looked at with the play therapy and the sand, uh, sand tray therapy. Um, Google Scholar can do a lot of this work for you, especially if you're just wanting something broad and you want to know what's coming in and it, it can be um, a generalized search or it can be really helpful for um, the variety of disciplines. But all in all, scholarship is complicated because it is created by human beings and we are incredibly complex people. Um, but we don't live in a space of scarcity. We live in a place of abundance as, as Christ followers who are also scholars. And if you find that you need additional help getting connected to a particular thing, go ahead and reach out and we'll be glad to help you. Um, and we, we, I appreciate you being here today and I hope this has been helpful and the slides will be posted and um, the recording will be as well. Uh, thank you so much.